Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You know, we've been talking about different funds and all that stuff, and we're going to get into a more technical type of fund. This is going to be called a quantitative funds, or quantitative investing, and in, you know, trading. It's going to get a little technical here and there. I'm going to try to keep it as simple as I can. Um, but, you know, some things just require a lot of information, and some parts of this might get really technical. So if it gets a little boring, my bad. But let's go ahead and jump into this, right? So quantitative investing, it's an investment process uh, where securities are chosen based on a uh, defined rules, right? And conventional active management is going to involve a team doing security-specific research, right? Modeling company financials, comparing industry peers, assessing competitive advantages, and picking the best stocks, right? Now, while these approaches are, you know, they're going to contain some rigid elements, right? Humans make the final call, right? Which, is, you know, that's going to embed a qualitative flexibility in the decision-making process. Uh, quantitative uh, investing has, you know, some creativity and flexibility, but it's only in choosing, arranging, and replacing data and inputs, not in choosing the actual stocks, right? A team is going to hunt for the best inputs, so it, that statistical model will give them the most attractive ideas with that chosen criteria, right? The aim is going to be to minimize human judgment and bias when choosing stocks. So, you know, how how does a, 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 quanti a quantitative fund choose its data and criteria? You know, what are they going by? Well... Managers are going to uh, sift through just tons of data, right? Looking for, you know, little pieces and nuggets that best indicate outperformance, right? And then these little, these little pieces can then become criteria in the model that's going to screen the securities, right? That they're going to put the securities through to see if it fits their model. Then they identify the best criteria through backtesting data. Right, because in back testing, they're gonna isolate a criteria they believe could outperform, such as stocks with low price earning ratios, right, over a set time period, say say like five five years, right? It could be anything. They could do three years, five years, seven years, ten years, right? Then they're gonna simulate right how a portfolio with this criteria fares against the broader market over that same time period. So if they chose three, five, eight, ten 10 years, whatever it's going to be, okay? If the backtesting indicates that the criteria helped returns, the team will test the variable in other market environments and data sets to ensure that that relationship isn't an isolated incident. So then what types of data and criteria can these types of managers use? Well... Most quantitative strategies will incorporate a company's financial statement data. This can include metrics like net income and ratios like net margin or price earnings. They can also gauge sentiment about the economy or a business. Right? Potential data points are going to include, um, you know, GDP, right? You know, gross domestic product uh, growth, or the dispersion of an, uh, an analyst's uh, earnings estimates for the next quarter, right? Um, and, you know, one of the last things is going to be that some of these strategies might use unstructured data or variables outside of conventional uh, financial analysis, right? Satellite imaging or credit card data might con contain, like, consumer trend insights, and help with estimating uh, company sales, for instance, right? You know, and so, like, what are the ways these funds differentiate themselves, right? Well, some of the strategies they use might, they might choose different metrics within similar data. One team might use price book and another might use price earnings, right? And a third could use both, right? Two strategies could use identical criteria, but differ in how they use it. Do they compare a stock's price earnings to sector peers, industry peers, both, or maybe neither, right? 
are some of the chosen criteria emphasized in sectors or industries that show stronger relationships? The criteria can also differ by time periods. One team might uh, gauge a stock's price earnings over three months, and another one could look at it for six months, right? Uh, plus, a criteria's value can deteriorate over time. So, you know, some of these managers are going to regularly replace decaying ones for, you know, new promising ones, right? So, how does strategic beta fit into this, right? Well, strategic beta replicates a benchmark. But the benchmark is weighed by a factor other than the market cap, right? Usually it's tilted towards uh, stocks whose financial metrics are going to be associated with an investing style, such as value or low price book, momentum, which is price movements, or growth, which is increasing revenue. Strategic beta funds, they seek to earn returns you would expect from a specific investing style. Each style has common and well-known factors. So tilting a portfolio toward one is easy and inexpensive. However, this also makes strategic uh, beta funds simpler in construction. Pure active quantitative strategies, con you know, contrarily, can choose investments outside their benchmark. This oftentimes is going to result in a more complex and most of the time more expensive models that choose stocks through sophisticated uh, algorithms or unique information like unstructured data. So how do these quantitative strategies manage risk? Well, quant funds often use an optimizer a separate model component that keeps sector and position size in check. So let's imagine if uh, one of these models is, spits out, um, let's say, 10 tech stocks, right, as the highest ranking choices. Buying all of them would spike the fund's technology weighting, exposing it to sector risk if the sector dipped. An optimizer creates constraints, such as a maximum sector weighting, so it limits the risk, right? So you're not going to go, you know, 10 technology stocks might be the best, but that way you're not, you know, you're trying to stay as diversified as, as you can, so you might not want 20% of your portfolio in tech, so you might, it might go through and say, oh, well, these two are going to be the best to make sure you stay within your sector weightings, or it might say, you know, you buy this one tech stock, you sell this stock in a different sector to offset, so you, now you can buy two tech stocks, right? They're trying to keep that balance. Uh, quantitative strategies are often less concentrated because a model has defined rules. It's easy to evaluate a wide security universe and buy the ones that look attractive. Unlike a human research team that might have resources to deeply cover only a fraction of the market. What are unique challenges to quant quantitative funds, right? Most quant funds struggle in rapidly shifting markets as past relationships might be less meaningful in different future environments. So, for instance, many fared really bad in the fourth quarter of 2018 and the first quarter of 2019 when stocks went down really bad and then, so, you know, just like immediately rose right after that, right? <clears throat> there are also some, like, you know, strategic risk and challenges quant funds can face. Uh, some of those can be uh, survival ship bias, right? Past data not accounting for businesses that no longer exist. Some trends might look different if the data included bankrupt companies. Uh, data mining, right? Identifying a criteria because you actively sought it out rather than it being a legitimate excess return source. You can often find a relationship in data just by looking hard enough, even if it's not truly there. Uh, another one is overfitting. When a statistical model anchors its assumptions too heavily on past data, 
to the point that these trends might not hold in the future. So quantitative strategies also trade frequently as the model's rankings constantly shift. This means the portfolio is constantly changing to reflect the best ideas, which results in above average trading costs. These costs make it more difficult for funds to add value after fees, right? So like I said, this is going to be really technical for some of this stuff. And I'm sure for some people, they're looking at this like, oh, you know, this doesn't matter to me. But I, you know, I know some people who have watched the TV show Billions and they've been asking me about quant funds and quant strategies. And so I figured I'd make a video for everybody about it. So hopefully everyone gets some good information on this video and tries, you know, kind of gets what's going on. Uh, I highly recommend watching that show. You know, it's got some good nuggets of information in there. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go ahead and give it a like and subscribe if you're not already. And until I see you guys in the next video, y'all be good.